For centuries, seers and prophets have come forward, offering dramatic visions of mankind's destiny. But what happens when the predictions turn deadly? Can nature be tricked by an artificial wound? Researchers in Barcelona have created an artificial placenta prototype in the hopes it could help extremely premature babies. Throughout history, stories have been told about extraordinary people who could see what will happen in the future. But lots of people didn't believe them. They thought it was just make-believe. Three of these special people were Baba Vanga, Nostradamus, and Mother Teresa. At first, many didn't trust what they said, but now their predictions grab the attention of people worldwide. As we get closer to the middle of 2024, let's look at their predictions. Join us in this video as we uncover these remarkable seers' prophetic insights, exploring their dark predictions for the year. We will start our video with predictions made by Baba Vanga. Born in 1911 in Macedonia, Vanga lost her sight in a tornado when she was just a child. However, this event awakened in her a mystical gift, the ability to foresee the future. By the 1980s, Baba Vanga had become renowned for her thousands of accurate predictions, earning her the nickname Nostradamus of the Balkans. Her prophecies spanned a wide range of topics, from personal destinies to global events, and many feared and respected her predictions. One of Baba Vanga's most striking predictions was related to biological weapons research. In her prophecy for 2024, she foresaw a powerful country conducting secret experiments with biological weapons. Are these coincidences or glimpses into a future we cannot yet comprehend? Keep watching to uncover more about Baba Vanga's predictions and their impact on today's world. Frightening infectious disease has returned to one African nation. According to the World Health Organization, an Ebola outbreak has been declared in Uganda. The mere thought of such a scenario is chilling, as biological weapons are known for their ability to spread invisibly and cause widespread death and chaos. The consequences of such actions could be catastrophic, leading to worldwide health emergencies and pandemics that cross every border. Baba Vanga's prediction regarding biological weapons research is particularly chilling due to the potential consequences such actions could have on a global scale. Biological weapons are designed to spread deadly diseases, making them difficult to detect and combat. Unlike conventional weapons, which target specific individuals or locations, biological weapons can affect large populations indiscriminately. The use of biological weapons has long been considered a grave threat to global security. The Biological Weapons Convention, BWC, which came into force in 1975, prohibits the development, production, and stockpiling of biological weapons. However, the clandestine nature of biological weapons research makes it challenging to verify compliance with the treaty. If a powerful country were indeed conducting secret experiments with biological weapons, the implications could be dire. Such weapons could potentially be used in acts of bioterrorism or as tools of warfare, leading to widespread illness, death, and chaos. The rapid spread of disease in an interconnected world could result in a global health crisis, overwhelming healthcare systems, and causing significant social and economic disruption. Just when you thought you've seen it all, Baba Vanga made another prediction. Another unsettling prediction made by Baba Vanga for 2024 was the emergence of a deadly and contagious disease that would surpass the impact of the COVID-19 outbreak. She described this future disease as being more deadly and spreading more rapidly than anything seen before. Recent warnings from the World Health Organization about a possible new disease, referred to as Disease X, lend credence to Vanga's prediction. The prospect of facing another, even more dangerous pandemic is indeed daunting, especially considering the ongoing challenges posed by COVID-19. COVID-19, caused by the novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2, has already claimed millions of lives and caused widespread disruption to economies and societies worldwide. The prospect of facing an even more dangerous disease a steady increase in North Texas COVID-19 cases has caught the attention of local health experts. Their biggest concern is that the current COVID vaccine may not be able to fight a new variant. Raises serious concerns about our ability to respond effectively to future pandemics. 
The concept of Disease X, as the World Health Organization, WHO, mentioned, refers to a hypothetical new pathogen that could cause a future pandemic. While the specifics of Disease X are unknown, the idea underscores the need for preparedness and vigilance in monitoring and responding to emerging infectious diseases. The emergence of a new, more deadly disease could pose significant challenges to public health systems, particularly in diagnosis, treatment, and vaccine development. It could also strain healthcare infrastructure and resources, potentially leading to shortages of medical supplies and personnel. But did Baba Vanga's prophecy relate to health only? Baba Vanga's prophecies also touched on political matters, including a prediction regarding the assassination of Russian President Vladimir Putin in 2024. Baba Vanga's prediction of the assassination of Russian President Vladimir Putin in 2024 is indeed a provocative one, especially considering the current geopolitical tensions between Russia and the West. While predictions of political events are always speculative, the possibility of such an event cannot be entirely discounted, given the history of political assassinations and the volatile nature of international relations. The assassination of a world leader, especially one as prominent as Putin, would undoubtedly have far-reaching consequences. It could lead to increased instability in Russia and the wider region, and a potential power vacuum that various political factions could exploit. It could also have significant implications for Russia's relations with other countries, particularly those in the West. Furthermore, the assassination of Putin could escalate tensions between Russia and the West, potentially leading to a spiral of retaliatory actions and further destabilization. It could also impact global security, as Russia is a significant nuclear power and a key player in many international conflicts. But the dangerous prophecy about Putin was not worse. Baba Vanga also predicted economic turmoil for Europe in 2024. She foresaw difficult times ahead, including inflation, economic growth, and financial stability challenges. She also predicted a shift in power and leadership in Europe and significant changes to the continent's shape and economy. These predictions align with current events as Europe faces economic challenges, including trade disruptions and the impact of the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. Stick around until the end for a surprise twist. Baba Vanga did not end there. One of her most striking prophecies was about designer humans, a concept that has intrigued and concerned many. Baba Vanga predicted that by 2024, science would be able to create customized humans in laboratories. This idea of genetically engineering babies with specific desired traits before their birth raised ethical questions and fears of misuse. Building on this, Baba Vanga also foresaw the end of natural births, with humans becoming utterly reliant on laboratory babies. While this prediction may seem far-fetched, advancements in reproductive technology and genetic science have made the idea of designer babies a topic of ethical debate and scientific possibility. Moving on from the world of genetics, Baba Vanga also predicted a rise in cyber attacks in 2024. She warned that hackers would become more adept and target critical infrastructure, leading to widespread disruption and endangering national security. This prediction has unfortunately proven to be accurate, with cyber attacks becoming increasingly severe and complex in recent years. A cyber attack has crippled four major Australian ports in a serious attack on transport infrastructure. Baba Vanga also predicted a rise in unethical surveillance, where every move and activity would be monitored via technology. This prediction is particularly chilling given the rapid advancements in surveillance technologies, raising concerns about privacy violations and potential abuses of power. On a more hopeful note, Baba Vanga predicted a breakthrough in cancer cure by 2024, bringing relief to millions who suffer from this dreaded disease. While there have been significant advancements in cancer treatment, a definitive cure remains elusive, making this prediction one that many are eagerly watching. Another health-related prediction made by Baba Vanga was the discovery of a cure for Alzheimer's. With the number of people living with dementia projected to rise significantly in the coming years, a cure for Alzheimer's would be a monumental achievement in healthcare. Baba Vanga warned of severe climate changes in 2024, including devastating natural disasters like tsunamis, monsoons, hurricanes, 
and tornadoes. While the exact nature of these disasters is unpredictable, climate change already has profound effects on our planet, making this prediction a sobering reminder of the importance of addressing climate change. In a prediction that has captured the imagination of many, Baba Vanga predicted that humanity would make its first contact with alien life in 2024. At the same time, such a prediction may seem like science fiction. Still, recent developments in space exploration and the discovery of potentially habitable exoplanets have renewed interest in the search for extraterrestrial life. Some people claim these predictions by Baba Vanga are coincidences. But what about the other predictions by Nostradamus and Mother Teresa? Keep watching to find out. So, what did Nostradamus predict for 2024? Born Michel de Nostradam in 1503 in the south of France, Nostradamus rose to fame for his prophetic writings, particularly his book Les Prophéties, published in 1555. In this video, we delve into the life of Nostradamus, his remarkable predictions, and the enduring impact of his work. Nostradamus's early life was marked by a thirst for knowledge and a keen interest in astrology and medicine. His grandfather taught him various subjects, including Latin, Greek, Hebrew, and mathematics. At 14, Nostradamus entered the University of Avignon to study medicine. However, he was forced to leave after only one year due to an outbreak of the bubonic plague. According to his account, he traveled throughout the countryside, researching herbal remedies and working as an apothecary. In 1522, he entered the University of Montpellier to complete his doctorate in medicine. He sometimes expressed disagreement with the teachings of the Catholic priests, who dismissed his notions of astrology. There are some reports that university officials discovered his previous experience as an apothecary and used this as a reason to expel him from school. The school took a dim view of anyone involved in what was considered a manual trade. However, most accounts state he was not expelled and received a medical license in 1525. At this time, he Latinized his name as was the custom of many medieval academics from Nostradam to Nostradamus. Over the next several years, Nostradamus traveled throughout France and Italy, treating victims of the plague. There was no known remedy at the time. Most doctors relied on potions made of mercury and the practice of bloodletting and dressing patients in garlic-soaked robes. Nostradamus developed some very progressive methods for dealing with the plague. He didn't bleed his patients, instead practicing effective hygiene and encouraging the removal of the infected corpses from city streets. He became known for creating a rose pill, an herbal lozenge made of rose hips, rich in vitamin C, that provided some relief for patients with mild plague cases. His cure rate was impressive, though much can be attributed to keeping his patients clean, administering low-fat diets, and providing plenty of fresh air. In time, Nostradamus found himself somewhat of a local celebrity for his treatments and received financial support from many of the citizens of Provence. 1N 1531, he was invited to work with a leading scholar of the time, Jules César Scaliger, in Agen, in southwestern France. There he married and in the next few years had two children. In 1534, his wife and children died, presumably of the plague, while he was traveling on a medical mission to Italy. Not being able to save his wife and children caused him to fall out of favor in the community and with his patron, Scaliger. As Nostradamus tirelessly worked to combat the plague, little did he know that his experiences would shape his future as a renowned seer, guiding him toward writing enigmatic prophecies that would captivate the world. So, what hidden knowledge did he acquire during his medical endeavors that would weave into his mystical predictions? Despite facing challenges from the Catholic Church and the academic community, Nostradamus continued to pursue his studies and develop his skills as a physician. He became known for his progressive methods in treating the plague, which included emphasizing hygiene and fresh air, rather than the traditional methods of bloodletting and herbal potions containing mercury. Nostradamus's experiences during this time shaped his belief in the power of astrology and prophecy. He began to develop his unique style of writing prophecies, which were often cryptic and open to interpretation. His predictions covered a wide range of topics, including natural disasters, conflicts, and the rise and fall of empires. One of Nostradamus's most famous predictions 
was the earthquake off the coast of Japan in 2024, which he wrote about in Les Prophéties. This prediction gained widespread attention when a similar earthquake occurred in Ishikawa, Japan, causing significant destruction and loss of life. The accuracy of this prediction, made over 400 years ago, continues to astound many people. In addition to the earthquake prediction, Nostradamus made several other notable prophecies for 2024. These include predictions of a massive earthquake in Japan, a great famine caused by a harmful wave, and a major war involving the destruction of a large empire. Nostradamus's prophecies for 2024 also include references to the destruction of a large empire. Throughout his writings, he often spoke of wars and conflicts that would shape the future of humanity. Many of his predictions are believed to have accurately foretold major historical events, such as the French Revolution, the rise of Napoleon, and the 9-11 attacks. Buckle up because we're about to get into what will happen this year, so you should stick back and pay close attention. 2024 has started as a very unpredictable year, and we are optimistic that some of Nostradamus's predictions for this year will come to pass. The first prophecy for this year is, the dry earth will grow more parched, and there will be great floods when it is seen. The astrologer warned that climatic changes will continue to wreak havoc on us. The mention of the earth growing more parched could refer to the increasing aridity in many regions due to rising temperatures and changing weather patterns. Likewise, the prediction of great floods could be seen as a reference to extreme weather events, including hurricanes, typhoons, and heavy rainfall, that are becoming more frequent and severe due to global warming. These events can lead to devastating flooding, displacing communities, and causing widespread damage. In today's world, where the effects of climate change are becoming increasingly evident, this prophecy could be interpreted as a warning about the urgent need to address environmental issues and reduce greenhouse gas emissions to mitigate the impact of climate change. Another disturbing prophecy by Nostradamus for this year is the change in the world economy. He says, as wealth and power begin to sway, doubt in leaders, currencies assay in search of answers, a changing trend, new horizons back in around the bend. The prophecy suggests a significant change in the world economy with a shift in wealth and power, leading to uncertainty in leadership and currencies seeking stability and direction. Nostradamus's prediction of the Queen's death reflects his prophecy's accuracy and potential importance. However, an author named Mario Redding published a book in 2005 in which he interpreted Nostradamus's writings to say the Queen would indeed die in 2022. It raises curiosity about the precision and validity of his other predictions, including those related to global events and personalities. Moving beyond geopolitical and royal matters, the note touches upon Pope Francis, the current religious head of the Catholics. Nostradamus's prophecy hints at the possibility of his replacement by someone else. However, specific details must be provided to discern this potential succession's timing, circumstances, or implications. We cannot deny that some of the predictions made by Nostradamus have come to pass. One of the most cited instances is his prediction of the Great Fire of London in 1666. In Century II, Quatrain 51, Nostradamus wrote, The blood of the just will be demanded of London burnt by fire in the year 66. This quatrain is often interpreted as a reference to the devastating fire that ravaged London in 1666, destroying a large part of the city and leading to significant loss of life. Another notable prediction is related to the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the end of World War II. In his quatrains, Nostradamus speaks of scourges the like of which was never seen, which some believe could be a reference to the unprecedented destruction caused by the atomic bombs. The mention of a stone in the tree has been interpreted as describing the mushroom clouds that rose above the cities after the bombings. These examples, among others, have led many to believe that Nostradamus possessed a unique ability to foresee future events. However, it's important to note that his prophecies are often vague and open to interpretation, leading to varying opinions on their accuracy. Whether one believes in the prophetic abilities of Nostradamus or not, his quatrains continue to captivate people worldwide, 
inspiring countless interpretations and discussions about the nature of fate and destiny. And if you are still not convinced about the existence of these beings that could predict the future, let's look into the prophecies made by Mother Teresa. So, what were the predictions of the great Mother Teresa for 2024? Mother Teresa, the beloved saint of the gutters, was born Agnes Goncha Boyakshu on August 26, 1910, in Skopje, modern-day North Macedonia. The so-called saint of the gutter was born in 1910 in modern-day Macedonia, but it was in the slums of Calcutta, India, that Mother Teresa found her home and her life's work. Her early life was marked by a strong influence of astrology, which played a significant role in shaping her beliefs and character. Agnes was raised in a devout Catholic family and was deeply influenced by her mother's commitment to charity and compassion. Her father, a successful businessman, provided a comfortable life for the family. But her mother's spirit of selflessness left a lasting impression on young Agnes. From an early age, Agnes showed a keen interest in astrology. She was fascinated by the stars and the mysteries of the universe, often spending hours studying the movements of the planets and their supposed influence on human behavior. Her fascination with astrology deepened as she grew older, and she began to see it as a way to understand the world and her place in it. Despite her interest in astrology, Agnes's early years were challenging. At the age of 12, she experienced a profound loss when her father passed away suddenly. This event profoundly impacted Agnes and deepened her resolve to find meaning and purpose in life. As Agnes grew older, she became more drawn to the teachings of astrology. She saw astrology as a way to connect with the divine and to understand the suffering of others better. This belief in astrology would later become a central tenet of her work with the poor and the sick. At 18, Agnes left home to join the Sisters of Loreto, a Catholic religious order with missions in India. She took the name Sister Mary Teresa in honor of Saint Therese of Lisieux, the patron saint of missionaries. During this time, she began her work in earnest, teaching at a school in Kolkata and caring for the poor and the sick in the city's slums. It was in the slums of Kolkata that Mother Teresa found her true calling. She was deeply moved by the suffering she witnessed and dedicated herself to serving the poorest of the poor. Her work drew international attention, and in 1979, she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for her humanitarian work. In a desperate plea to God, Mother Teresa struggled with feelings of hopelessness and a profound sense of isolation. She quoted St. John saying, How can you say that you love God whom you don't see if you do not love? Torn between a yearning for a divine connection and the suffocating weight of doubt. Despite her internal turmoil, Mother Teresa bravely laid bare her struggles, expressing her desire for forgiveness and closeness to Jesus. Mother Teresa's spiritual loneliness grew as her influence grew. She confided in spiritual advisors, seeking solace and guidance. Despite her deep faith, she felt an unbearable absence of Jesus' presence, intensifying her pain and isolation. Even as her missionaries of charity garnered global recognition, her spiritual turmoil persisted. However, in a letter to Father Perrier around 1961, Mother Teresa expressed a newfound acceptance of her spiritual darkness. She embraced her suffering as a faint echo of Christ's earthly torment, finding solace in the notion that her pain mirrored Christ's on the cross. This acceptance liberated her from despair and ignited hope, transforming her pain into a symbol of faith and resilience. Teresa also informed Father Perrier of growing intimacy with an inner darkness that had gnawed at her spirit for years. Though her spiritual director, Father Perrier, played a crucial role in her journey, the pain persisted. Yet Teresa followed God's calling despite the absence of solace. This acceptance of her spiritual desolation became a cornerstone of her being, ultimately leading her to a life dedicated to serving the most vulnerable. Teresa also mentioned that her suffering might extend into the afterlife. Despite her internal struggles, this unwavering dedication exemplifies the boundless compassion that won her global recognition. Notably, a Jesuit priest who observed her lengthy spiritual turmoil remarked that it wasn't a fleeting phase, but rather a permanent state she was meant to endure. Even later, Mother Teresa continued to battle her negative feelings. 
A letter from 1995 revealed a deep sense of spiritual emptiness, showing that her struggles persisted until the end of her life. Reverend Kodak suggests a divine purpose behind Teresa's perceived abandonment, a potential cleansing of pride to reveal the true strength of her spirit. While Teresa achieved significant successes, overcoming institutional hurdles and following Jesus' calling, an internal struggle brewed within her. Dr. Richard Godel, delving into the psychological aspects of her situation, proposes that Teresa's solitude might have stemmed from an intense focus on humility, a desire to avoid taking credit for her accomplishments. Dr. Godel compares it to a business leader who makes a social blunder during a crucial event. However, these trials appeared to exacerbate Teresa's unhappiness, a weight she carried, peculiarly in her pursuit of divine favor. According to some sources, Mother Teresa's increased dedication to her ministry might have caused internal conflict, leading to emotional withdrawal. Biographer Christopher Hitchens suggests a more critical interpretation. He compares Teresa's experience to disillusioned communists who lose faith in their ideology. However, religious scholars generally disagree, attributing her pain to a different source. They propose that Teresa's suffering stemmed from a deep sense of separation from God, similar to a devoted spouse enduring a long period of silence from their beloved. Martin, another biographer, uses this analogy to describe Teresa's commitment to her work, caring for the poorest of the poor, as an act of unwavering love and loyalty. The trials and tribulations experienced by a beautiful soul like Mother Teresa raise profound questions about the nature of suffering and faith. Thank you for watching. We will see you in our next video.